and after all this you might still have some doubts like yes we send logs but what will be the frequency and is it sending logs in real time or not so let's discuss that so when you read this line which says a flow log record represents a network flow in your vpc then the flow log record captures the information about the network internet protocol traffic flow which means the flow of packet traffic that carries information from the source interface or instance to the destination so that is what it actually means so the flow log record captures the information about the network internet protocol traffic flow that is your ip traffic which obviously means that it is a packet traffic and what does the packet carry it basically carries the information from the source interface or instance to the destination and one more important thing that i forgot to mention that you might feel that the enabling of these flow logs it might impact the performance or latency but it does not because it runs outside of the overall service transaction and you can create these flow logs without having to worry about the impact on the performance so don't worry about that and the time interval in which the traffic flow occurs is called a capture window or more precisely an aggregate interval and remember this meaning of aggregate very carefully that it is an entity formed by a combination or collection of things and if you combine interval with aggregate it means that it's a combination of time intervals so here we have a time frame with each cell being a time interval of 1 minute and as it is rightly mentioned here that aggregation interval is the period of time during which a particular flow is captured and aggregated into a flow log record by default the maximum aggregation interval is 10 minutes so that is what you need to remember for the vpc flow logs the maximum aggregation interval is 10 minutes so basically your aggregation is a collection of time frames and in that time frame your logs are being captured so that is why it is called as a capture window and as i already said aggregation is a combination it is made of small time intervals or small time frames called the sampling intervals the sampling interval is basically the distance or time between which measurements are taken or data is recorded so s1 that you see here has a sampling interval of 1 minute and a1 that we have as the aggregation interval has the aggregation interval of 5 minutes so it will collect all the log records in that time frame that is the capture window consisting of 5 sampling intervals similarly we have s2 with the sampling interval of 5 minutes and the aggregation interval of 10 minutes here we have a log capture window of exactly 10 minutes and if you see here and try to understand the flow log works on the principle of the capture window time frame and it can produce more number of flow log records if the maximum aggregation interval is reduced so if suppose i reduce the maximum interval aggregation interval from 10 minutes to 1 minute it is going to generate a huge amount of log records and for the nitro based instances that you have it is basically by default it is set to 1 or less and the most important reason why flow logs don't generate logs in real time is that once the data is received it takes time to process and push them to either s3 or cloudwatch so don't expect that as in when you make changes you might be looking into your screens to have your results published so i hope that was clear and if you have some doubts then please put them on the comment section below and we can have a discussion on that as well so vpc flow logs is a feature that enables you to capture information about the ip traffic going to and from the network interfaces in your vpc so remember this very carefully when you read this being a feature then imagine having an option to switch it on or off for a service that you're currently using that's the same reason why it's rightly mentioned here that vpc flow logs is a feature that enables you to capture information in the form of logs and you can publish the flow data or the flow log data to amazon cloudwatch logs or amazon s3 so if you wish to see the logs you have to go to either of these services and view them and yes there are a lot of benefits of using flow logs but these three points have been actively mentioned in the documentation as well so the first point is monitoring the traffic that is reaching your instance that is helpful as you can review the incoming request and analyze or make changes to the application depending on what type of logs you are receiving and the second one is also very useful diagnosing overly restrictive security group rules so in case there are issues with connectivity to the instance or the services that you are trying to access it can also help you figure out the issue the number 3 that we have is determining the direction of the traffic to and from the network interfaces 
So another thing that you will understand when you see the log formats or VPC flow logs is that it contains the information about the source and the target instances or services that the logs are being sent to or received from. And that also can help you with debugging. So let's move on and understand how we can use the VPC flow logs. So you can create VPC flow logs for three entities. So the first one is VPC itself or the subnet or a network interface. So if you enable it for a subnet, all the instances and interfaces within that subnet will also be monitored. Neat, isn't it? Let's see how it does. So when you think of log, any event that occurs in the pieces of entities that you see here will generate entries that contain information about what exactly has happened. And that piece of information or the entry is called as log. And the flow log data for a monitored network interface is recorded as flow log records. But if you wish to publish logs, you must keep these three steps in mind. So the first step is the resource for which to create the flow log. So it could be your instance or subnet or VPC. And the second one, the type of traffic to capture. So it could be either your accepted traffic or rejected traffic or it could be all the traffic. And the third one, the destination to which you want to publish the flow log data. That is either if you want to store them as a file in S3 or the CloudWatch log stream. So if you see the visual here, subnet A has the VPC flow logs enabled for the instance or the network interface and it publishes logs only for that. But when you see on the right hand side, the VPC flow log actually has been enabled for the whole subnet. And as I have already mentioned before, this will cover all the instances V3 and V4 and the network interface that are part of the subnet. Unfortunately, as nothing is attached to the instance v2, it actually misses out on the logs. Simple, isn't it? And we can create flow logs for the interfaces that are created with Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon RDS, Amazon Elastic Cache, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Workspaces, NAT Gateways, Transit Gateways. So many of them are here. So that actually gives us a lot of provisions to enable VPC flow logs and monitor these systems. And you can send them to CloudWatch or Amazon S3. That's one added advantage, isn't it, that we get. 